Good morning, precious brothers and sisters in the Lord. This day, we are to start uh, one hour late. We are to attend uh, to visit our precious brother Roy Amond, who was admitted uh, in uh, Toowoomba Hospital. He had a massive uh, heart attack. But uh, by God's grace, uh, he made it. We paid him a visit this morning, so considering the traffic and uh, the road that was quite uh, very, very busy, <coughs> we couldn't make it for our prayer meeting to Maryborough. <coughs> Shall we stand for the word of prayer? <clears throat> Precious Heavenly Father, in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, under that precious blood which was shed on the cross of Calvary, Father, we come in thy presence, believing and trusting that you're going to speak to each one of us again this day. Remember our precious sister Nikon Gandu has been uh, taken to hospital as we are told as we are coming that she's not feeling well. Father, come heal her. Do thy best because we know that without thee, nothing is possible. You can still touch that body by thy grace, because that is our promise. May thy perfect will be done also to our precious brother Roy that we have just visited. Remember also all brethren who are bedridden, who are seeking for thy help. Father, we know that you are the one who knows everything before the end. We commit ourselves unto thee again this day. Even this sermon that we are going to share, we know that thy children are connected all over the earth to listen to thy word and we know that very soon the rapture is gonna take place be with us in Jesus Christ's name we have prayed amen we shall sing our first song in our song books song number 78 Song number 78 Such love That God should love a sinner such as I Should yet to change my sorrow into bliss no rest till he a plan to bring me nigh. How wonderful is love like this. Such love, such love, such wondrous love. Such love, such wondrous love. God should love a sinner such as I. How wonderful is love like this. That Christ should join so freely in this thing. Although it meant his death on Calvary, did ever you my tongue find no pleasure? That love divine that trusts on me. Such love, such love, such 
such wondrous love, such love, such wondrous love that blows you love. such as I. How wonderful is love like this, that for a willful outcast such as I. The Father plan, the Savior bled and died, redemption for a worthless left to buy. Who longer law and grace defy such love, such love, such wondrous love, such love, such wondrous love. That God should love a sinner such as I. How wonderful is love like this. And now he takes me to his heart, his son. He asks me no to fill a servant's place. The far off country wanderings all had done. Wide open are his arms of grace, such love, such love, such wondrous love, such love, such wondrous love, that God should love a sinner such as I. How wonderful is love like this. Shall we sing song number 42? Song number 42 from our song books, Jesus the Light. <clears throat> All ye saint of light proclaim Jesus the light of the world. Life and mercy in his name, Jesus, the light of the world. We walk in the light, beautiful, beautiful light. Come when the dewdrops of mercy are bright. Shine all around us by day and by night. Jesus, the light of the world, yeah, the Savior and his call. Jesus, the light of the world, send the gospel truth to all. Jesus, the light of the world. We walk in the light, beautiful, beautiful light. Come when the dewdrops of mercy are bright. Shine all around us by day and by night. Jesus, the light of the world. Why not seeking them today? Jesus, the light of the world, go with truth the narrow way. Jesus, the light of the world, we walk in the light, beautiful, beautiful light. Come when the dewdrops of mercy are bright. Shine all around us by day and by night. Jesus, the light of the world. Come confessing as your King. Jesus, the light of the world. Then the bells of heaven will ring. Jesus, the light of the world. We walk in the light, beautiful, 
beautiful light. Come where the dewdrops of mercy are bright. Shine all around us by day and by night. Jesus, the light of the world. Shall we sing song number 26? Just a closer walk. <clears throat> I'm a weak, but thou art strong. Jesus, keep me from all wrong. And this satisfies as long as I go. Let me walk close to thee. Just stay closer. Just a closer walk with thee. Just a closer walk with thee. Granted, Jesus is my plea. Is my plea. Daily walking close to thee. Let it be, dear Lord. Let it be. Through this world of darkness, if I fought a lot to kiss, who will be my burden shares? None but thee, dear Lord, none but thee. Just stay closer, just stay closer, oh. Just stay closer, walk with the grant. Jesus is my plea, is my plea. Daily walking close to thee. Let it be, dear Lord, let it be. When my feeble life is over. Time for me will be no more. Guide me gently, safely over to thy kingdom shore, to thy shore. Just stay closer, just stay closer, walk with thee. Just stay closer, walk with thee. Jesus is my plea, is my plea, daily walking close to thee, let it be, dear Lord, let it be. Yes, we have uh, some uh, greetings from uh, Brother Emmanuel, Sister Laura, Sister Thelma from uh, Perth, of course, we have uh, also greeting from Brother Gary, Brother Steve, Sister Veronica, yeah, from Maryboro, greetings from uh, Brother Isaac from uh, UK, and Brother Nazaire from Kinshasa, the GRC. We are going to discover all of us uh, the word of exhortation that our precious brother Steve sent to us of course uh, as he was inspired by the Lord we shall stand as we are going to read from Deuteronomy chapter 19 Deuteronomy chapter 19 yes the brother gave Deuteronomy chapter 19 Verse 9. If, <clears throat> if thou shalt keep all these commandments to do them, which I command thee this day, to love the Lord thy God, and to walk ever in his ways, then shalt thou add three cities more for thee, beside these three. May the Lord God bless the reading of this scripture as we sit. Yes, 
my precious brothers and sisters, as we have been uh, sharing from last week, that we must do what the Lord says unto us. As I keep on asking all the time the very same question, is it really difficult to do what God is asking us to do? When he's asking us to do, it's because he knows that we are capable of doing it. If there is something very simple, is to do the word of God, to follow it. As the brother gave to us this scripture, if thou shalt keep all these commandments, to do them. We are not just piling the word of God in our heart, but we must be the doers. And that's what God is expecting to see from us. If we don't do them, it means we don't believe. And if we don't do them, how can we expect to see the promises of God being fulfilled in us? For sure, even if the entire world, the denominations, are doing whatsoever they, 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 they wish to do according to their own pleasure, but there must be a group of people who will keep the commandment of God and do them, even if they don't understand. Of course, the commandment of God our commandment, it's not for us to argue. A commandment, it's an instruction which is given for in order for us to follow, in order for us to, to put into action. Precious brothers and sisters, I beg you. When God is giving us his word, he knows exactly why he's doing so. As we could read last time, maybe I'll read it again today, in Romans chapter 1, yes, I think I must start from there also. Romans chapter 1, verse 16, the Bible says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth. When we accept the word of God, when we do the word of God, we have the power of God. Brethren, I think we read it the last time, but I will read it again today. In the book of Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 14. You know, when I understood the privilege that God has given to us, especially related to the gospel, we are the most blessed people here on earth. Amen. If things don't work, if we don't see the fulfillment of the promises of God in our daily lives, no one should blame God. I say, if we don't see the fulfillment of the promises of God in our lives, no one should blame God. Our task is 
to receive the word of God and to do them. And if we have such attitude, God is bound to fulfill his promises through us and in us. Because we know the scriptures, 2 Corinthians chapter 1 from verse 19, all the promises of God are yes and amen. Isaiah chapter 14, when we read verse 24. Listen. I think I didn't read it last Sunday, but I will read it today. Isaiah chapter 14, verse 24. The Lord of hosts has sown, saying, Surely, as I have thought, so shall it to come to pass. And as I have purposed, so shall it stand. Amen. We may like it or not, brothers and sisters, whatsoever that the Lord God said will come to pass. And Amen. as the Bible says, he has sown himself. By himself. So if you want to see the fulfillment of what God has been thinking, even before the foundation of the world, let us do his word. Amen. And when we continue, verse 26, listen. This is the purpose that is purposed upon the whole earth. And this is the hand that is stretched out upon all the nations. For the Lord of hosts had purposed, and who shall disannul it? If he has decided who should come and say something of con contrary to what he has said, who can stop what God has already planned? No one. And his hand is stretched out, and we shall turn it back. Brothers, sisters, the Lord God has decided to see a bride that will be blameless, spotless, without any wrinkle. No one will stop it. The Lord of God, the, 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 the Lord of hosts has decided to see his bride to be raptured. No one can stop it. Amen. Listen, brothers and sisters. The same book of Isaiah, chapter 55. Isaiah, chapter 55. I will read from verse 8. For my thoughts, Isaiah, chapter 55, from verse 8. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, Neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain cometh down, and the snow from heaven, and returneth not tither, but watereth the earth, and maketh it bring forth and bad, that it may give seed to the sour, and bread to the to the eater, so shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, 
and it shall prosper in the thing where to I sent it. Amen. The Bible is the word of God in a written form. So when we accept the word of God, it must accomplish in each one of us what pleases the Father. Amen. So that's why we should speak like Mary. Let it be as thy will. Listen, brothers, sisters, I beg you. The same book of Isaiah chapter 54. Now, to those who are ready to receive the commandment from God, to do them, those who are ready to obey our Lord Jesus Christ, to follow all his commandments, Listen to what thus saith the Lord. It's not to me because I'm going to read it from the Bible. Isaiah chapter 54. When we read from verse 10, listen to what the Lord God is saying. Not brother Lotika or brother Frank standing in front of you. Isaiah 54 verse 10. For the mountains, plural, shall depart. And the hills, plural, be removed. But my kindness shall not depart from thee. Amen. Neither shall the covenant of my peace be removed, saith the Lord that had mercy on thee. And this, no one can disannul it. God has decided. Can you see how privileged people do we are, brothers and sisters? Mm -hmm. And the same book of, okay, now in Jeremiah chapter 1, yes, I must read it. Jeremiah chapter 1, when we read from verse 11. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Jeremiah, what seest thou? And I said, I see a road of an almost tree. Then said the Lord unto me, Thou hast well seen, for I will hasten my word to perform it. Amen. Hallelujah. So when we receive the word of God, God must perform it. It takes the full responsibility to fulfill whatsoever he has promised. Our task is just to accept the word of God. Precious brothers and sisters, as I mentioned the last time, in our heart we must have that desire. Desire. We must have an expectation. Each time when we are in the presence of God, when we come in the presence of God, what is our expectation? Because if there is no expectation, we can't receive anything. Listen, brothers and sisters, this is very, very important because in the very same book of Jeremiah chapter 29, yes, I must read it, Jeremiah chapter 29, the Bible says, Jeremiah chapter 29, can you imagine what the Bible is saying from verse 11? For I know the thought that I think towards you, saith the Lord, thought of peace and not of evil to give you an expected and Amen. what are our expectations when we come unto the Lord?
the woman who had the, yes that woman with the issue of blood when she came unto the Lord she was expecting a healing she was expecting to see the blood issue seized and the Lord could even say let it be done according to thy faith she got it yeah. and the Lord could say yes I can feel that virtue is gone out of me brothers sisters we can also be in that position we have something that is burning in our heart and when we come to the Lord nothing is impossible unto him even the healing is not impossible unto him he raised Lazarus someone was already buried there are so many miracles done in the Bible that blind man who could you know you know cry loudly even when the disciples and the people said no shut up shut. the more they were trying to stop it the more he was screaming why because he was expecting something from the Lord and the Bible says the Lord stopped he was on his way he stopped someone was crying listen brothers and sisters in the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ even those who are in hospital I know for instance brother Roy he was saying that he's gonna listen follow us online yes when we expect from the Lord nothing is impossible unto him Amen. nothing As I, as I keep on asking, can you name a single demon that is stronger than our Lord? You can't find it. Can you name a single disease that is stronger than our Lord? There is nothing. Listen when we go to verse 12. Then shall ye call upon me and ye shall go and pray unto me, and I will hearken unto you. Mm. Verse 13. And ye shall seek me, and find me, when ye shall search for me with all your heart. Brothers and sisters, we must come with expectation. Actually, Brother Branham was even mentioning in one of his sermon. He was mentioning, talking about desperation. When we reach that stage of desperation, you say, Lord, if you don't come in here, I am done. Jacob, when he met the Lord, he was so desperate that he said, I'm not going to leave you until you bless me. Amen. He got it. Listen, brothers and sisters. This morning, before going to Toowoomba, of course, because we woke up around 5 o'clock. And then uh, I was thinking about one scripture, say, where is it written? I found it in the book of Isaiah, chapter 65. Yes, I must read it. Isaiah, chapter 65. You know, when I found it, I was rejoicing. Isaiah, chapter 65. Shall we read verse 24? I was looking for this scripture yesterday. I couldn't find it. 
and uh, it made me a bit nervous until this morning I found it. Listen, Isaiah 65 verse 24. Listen what the Bible says. And it shall come to pass that before they call, I will answer. And while they are yet speaking, I will hear. Amen. Can you imagine brothers and sisters? Why? Because God knows exactly what is in our heart. He searches the heart. Oh my, my. I think that I must also read it in Jeremiah chapter 23. Yes, I think that's the one. I, uh, Jeremiah chapter 23. When we read from verse 23, listen to what the Bible is saying. Am I a God at hand, said the Lord, and not a God afar off? Can any hide himself in secret places that I shall not see him? Said the Lord. Do not I feel heaven and earth, said the Lord. Mm -hmm. Listen, brothers and sisters, the same Jeremiah chapter 17. Yes, Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 10. Listen, Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 10. I, the Lord, search the heart. I try the reins, even to give every man according to his ways, according and according to the fruit of his doings. The Lord God can search our heart. Nothing is hidden unto him. That's why Isaiah could say in Isaiah 65, verse 24, It shall come to pass that before they call, I will answer. Because he knows already what is in your heart. But if in our heart there is no expectation, there is no desire, how can we get from the Lord? Brothers, sisters, I think time has come for us not only to be the hearers, but we must be the doers. Time has come, even when we are going for, for most of us who have been uh, in schools, you know, went for studies, there is always a time when you go for theory. And then it must come a time when they will expect us to practice. And the one who was teaching, or the professor, or the tutor, or whosoever, will have to see how the student, they are practicing what they got from him. And the Holy Spirit is the teacher. He cannot only teach, he wants to see that these, no wonder the Lord Jesus Christ could say, did you understand? It's not just a matter of hearing, we must understand and put him to in practice. Even like some of us, we went for medical school, trainings. I mean, uh, yes, we had lessons, but it came a time when the professors, our teachers, wanted to see how we can practice what we got from school or from university. I can't just come and claim and say, yes, I'm a, I'm a medical doctor. They give you a patient, you don't even know how to make a diagnosis. Then there is something wrong. Now the Holy Spirit is a teacher. And the teacher, when he's teaching us, we must be able to put him to practice. Listen, brothers and sisters, I beg you. When we talk about the kingdom of God, in the kingdom of God, the spirit of God must be found in that kingdom. And the Spirit of God, all of us, we know that it is the Holy Spirit. Brethren, 
I beg you. If the Holy Spirit cannot speak to us, if the Holy Spirit cannot rebuke you or rebuke me, if the Holy Spirit cannot make himself manifest through us, then there is a problem. Yes, I think this is a serious statement. All of us, we are called sons and daughters of God. All of us claim to be in the kingdom of God. We can't speak of the kingdom of God without the Holy Spirit. Then there is a problem. Shall I challenge everyone, even myself? In the book of John, yes. John chapter 14. John chapter 14. Hmm. John chapter 14. Because of time, I will read from verse 12. <clears throat> Remember the word of exhortation that our precious brother Steve sent to us. That uh, talking about the commandment of God, we must keep all the commandment of God and do them in order for God to act. In order for God to do something. I remember what Brother Frank said many, many times. If you don't believe God, God is not prepared to talk to you at all. If you don't want to believe God, then close your Bible, go home. Listen, John chapter 14 because of time, I'll read from verse 12. I'm challenging everyone, even myself. Verily, verily, without any doubt. In other words, for sure. I say unto you, Jesus Christ our Lord, He's speaking to you. He's speaking to me. And he says, without any doubt. He that believeth on me. Do you believe in Jesus? Amen. I believe in Jesus. Now, he says, he that believeth on me. The works that I do, shall he do also. Shall I stop first there? Can I challenge the entire church all over the earth? The Lord Jesus Christ is talking about the works. Where are the works? Are we just supposed to pile up scriptures? Are we supposed just to pile up scriptures? To put them in our notebooks? Or to, re to recite them? He says, He that believeth on me, the works that I do, Shall he do also? Brethren, before I continue, in us it must be a cry. It must be a desire. Say, Lord Jesus, you promised it. I would like those works to start with me. Each one of us should say it. Amen. 
this word should start with me. It must be a desire. We must cry out to him. Because this promise cannot just remain in the Bible. If truly we are believers, this scripture, this promise must be, you know, witnessed by the entire world. And that is the desire of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Before I continue, before I continue, yes, I printed two things here. I mean, two statements from Brother Branham in the message, the token. It was preached on the 8th of February, 1964. In paragraph 142, listen what Brother Branham is saying. Jesus said, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. Amen. He that believeth not shall be damned. These signs shall follow them that believe. And then the brother asked this question, how far? Himself gives the answer to all the world, to every creature. In my name, they shall cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. Take up serpents or drink deadly things. It won't harm them. If they lay their hands on the sick, they shall recover. Now the brother says, apply the token and then claim your rights. Shake it before Satan. Listen, brothers and sisters. Here, it is not just for preachers. Whosoever believeth. I'll come back to that. Listen, brothers and sisters. The brother is saying, we must shake it before Satan. It's a promise given to me and you. Why we don't apply it? And the problem also here is, I can pray for you. If you don't believe it, if you don't have that expectation, that great desire in you, nothing can take place. Jesus Christ wants to see this to take place in each one of us. It's not only given to preachers, no, to whosoever believeth and has been baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Brothers and sisters, this is not my word. These are the, name, the words of our Lord Jesus Christ. Remember, the subject is still do what he wants us to do. Amen. We must do what he has said. I will read another statement from the same. Uh, yes. Yes, I will read this one again. Paragraph 124, the same sermon, the token. Full obedience to the word brings God, the word eternal in you. And that is the token. When the word is in you, it is Christ in you. Brothers and sisters, I printed this one. I want every, everyone to believe and to follow what I'm reading here. I will start this statement again. Full obedience to the word brings God. 
the word eternal in you. And that is the token. When the word is in you, it is Christ in you. Not a church, not a pastor. When we receive this word, it is Christ in me. It is Christ in you. As he's saying here, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he do also. Let me continue before. Then he says, Then, when we pray, if we have the token, and when we pray, we have the token, we are, no, we present our token with our prayer. Now, if you are sick, if you are a sinner, if you are in need, when you have the token, you have a right. Mm -hmm. If I had the token to a bus lying in my hand, they can't keep me off of that bus. Mm -hmm. They have accepted my money and I have the token. In this case, I could not pay my price. You could not pay it. But he paid it for us Amen. and gives us the token. Amen. Amen. I have a right to divine healing. Amen. Jesus Christ died that I could have divine healing. Amen. Listen, brothers and sisters, even all of those who are sick. Jesus Christ died for us, eh? for us to have the divine healing. It is our right. Amen. I have a right to claim every promise in that book. When will you get it? When you have the token. Listen. If you haven't got it, the sign of full obedience the fire is paid already. Now, I will continue here. <clears throat> verily, verily, I say unto you, He that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he do also. And greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father. Now listen to verse, verse 13. It's not me. It's the Lord Jesus Christ speaking to you and me. As I'm saying, I'm challenging all of us. And whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. Amen. Brothers, sisters, we know these scriptures. We know these scriptures. In our heart, eh, we must have that desire. We must pray and cry unto the Lord for these scriptures to have effect in us. We are, we are expecting to be raptured. But before the rapture, we must shake this world. If there is no expectation in our heart, then there is a problem. Verse 14. If he shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. Brothers, sisters, it's not me, it's the Lord Jesus Christ. If ye shall ask anything, is there a special desire in your heart right now? Is there a special burden in your heart now? If you are a believer, if you have accepted all the commandments of God, if you are an obedient child of God, 
run to Jesus and tell him, you said, if I shall ask anything in your name, you will do it. It's not Brother Frank or Brother Lotika speaking now. It's the Lord Jesus Christ speaking to each one of us, even unto myself. Shall we also read again John chapter 16? Verse, verse 24. John chapter 16 from verse 24. <clears throat> Here to, if ye ask nothing in my name, ask, and ye shall receive that your joy may be full. You see what the Lord Jesus Christ wants to see in us. He wants to see you and me to be joyful. It's like any father, any parent who wants to see his children to be joyful. If we as human being, we can do it. Or we are striving to do it. What more about our God? Unto whom nothing is impossible. Listen, brothers, listen, sisters. When we read in Matthew chapter 1, verse 23, when they came to announce the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ, they could say, the king is born. Amen. He was born as a king. Even when he was in front of, uh, you know, uh, uh, Pilate, when he was asking, are you, are you a king? He did deny it. He was born a king. And a king must have right in his kingdom. And according to the book of Colossians, we have been translated from the kingdom of darkness unto the kingdom of Jesus Christ. He's with us. As he mentioned himself in Matthew chapter 28 verse 20. I will be with you. Amen. He promised that he will never leave us alone. Precious brothers and sisters. I beg you. As I keep on saying. 2 Corinthians chapter 6. From verse 14 to verse 18. He promised us that He will dwell in us. He will walk in us. As Brother Branham could say that when we receive the word of God, it is Christ in us. Please, I beg you. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 30 says, don't grieve the Holy Spirit of God. He is dwelling in you. He is dwelling in me. Unless if you are doing something which is contrary to the Spirit of God, that will make him not dwell in you because that Spirit is holy. Brothers and sisters, when are we expecting to see Christ? When are we expecting to see Christ becoming, you know, manifested in us? We can't just remain, you know, with theory, theory, theory. Where, are, where is the practice? Where is the practice? Brothers, sisters, I remember I must find that sermon. Brother Branham was saying, we must start practicing our faith.
We must start practicing our faith. It is a training that we must go through. It means, yes, you say, yes, the Lord Jesus Christ says, I will pray for the sick. Don't wait for the preacher to come. It's your husband. It's your wife. Pray for him. Apply the scriptures. As I keep on saying, if it doesn't work the first time, I will keep on praying. Amen. I will keep on praying. Mm -hmm. Until when we shall, we shall come from theory to reality. Amen. Our God is the God of reality. Listen, brothers and sisters. When we read Genesis chapter 1, when we read John chapter 1, it is spoken about the creation. Now tell me, is the creation just something that we can imagine? No. The creation is real. When you go outside, you will see the trees. You will see, uh, you will see everything that God created. Because say, let, let there be light. You go outside, you will see the light. Let them be so and so. We shall, we can see it. It's real. When he said, let us make men in our own image. I'm there. You are there. We are realities of God. Yes, I'm starting from those basics. If you can breathe, it's not because you are clever. No. Him, breath, is breath for us to start breathing. Amen. We are realities. Mm -hmm. God is real. Is breath. Is suffering. Is, you know, when he died on the cross of Calvary. When he went down, okay, he, when he was buried, he went down to hell. He when he, you know, he resurrected. Even when he was taken on the clouds, everything was reality, 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 reality. For some of us who have been uh, several times in Jerusalem, in Israel, we have seen the empty tomb. It is real. So if we can talk about the creation, reality, we talk about human being, reality, we can see dogs, reality, we can see cats, reality, we can see trees, reality. We can... But now, where are the works? The works also must be reality. Divine reality. But those divine realities must take place in human being like you and me. Yes, I think uh, this is a terrible challenge to all of us, even myself. In our heart, we must have that expectation. We must have that desperation. We must be desperate. Say, Lord, you spoke about it. I would like this to be starting with me. Each one of us should say, it must start with me. Amen. Brothers and sisters, because the time is all, almost gone, but uh, let me just steal 10 minutes of yours. When we read in John chapter 17, 17, in the prayer of our Lord Jesus Christ, we say, Him, I know, I must read it. John chapter 17. Yes, I must read it. Listen. John chapter 17. Because of time. First of all, read, let me read verse 17. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. I will jump because of time. Now listen verse 23. This was the prayer of our Lord Jesus Christ. John 17 from verse 23. 
No, 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 no. Okay, because of time, but uh, if you can read everything. Verse 23, the Bible says, actually the Lord Jesus Christ said, I in them. Jesus Christ in us. Jesus Christ in me. Jesus Christ in you. No, if, don't tell me that this scripture has not taken place. If you don't believe, yes, it won't happen. But if you believe by faith, you say, yes, Lord Jesus Christ, come and dwell in me because you promised it. And then when Jesus Christ dwells in you, you are Christ. It is Christ in you. And Christ in you can do the things, the, the, the works that he used to do. Remember, as I used to say, act, the book of Act is not the act of the apostles. It is the act of the Holy Spirit through the apostles. The act of the Holy Spirit through the believers. The act of the Holy Spirit through Peter and everyone. Now, Peter is not here. Those apostles are not here. There must be people like you and me, in whom Jesus Christ our Lord can say, I in them, and thou in me, that they may, that they may be made perfect in one. And listen, and that the world may know that thou hast sent me and hast loved them as thou hast loved me. Listen, brothers and sisters, Jesus Christ in us for the world to know. The Bible is talking about the manifestation of the children of God. The entire cre creation is waiting for the manifestation of the children of God. In which way? Christ must dwell in you. Christ do must dwell in me. And it must be our cry. Oh my God. Oh my God. Listen, brothers and sisters. Most of us were baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. When we read in Romans chapter 6 from verse 3, you know, to 4, we were buried with him. We were raised with him. And now when we are walking, we are walking in the newness of life. In him. With him. Read your Bible. Romans chapter 6 from verse 3. We must understand. We must believe by faith that Jesus Christ is dwelling in me. Jesus Christ is dwelling in you. That's why there are times when you can do, you know, you are alone. You do something which is not right or maybe a thought that is not right in you. You feel the Holy Spirit rebuking you. If the Holy Spirit can rebuke you, the Holy Spirit is Jesus Christ in the form of the Spirit. It means He's dwelling in you. As I mentioned many, many times, if you don't have the Holy Spirit in you, there is no difference between you and a dog. There is no difference between you and the snake. Because a snake can come and bite you. That snake cannot have any remorse. That's why you see sometimes we have brothers, sisters that we call brothers and sisters. But if they don't have the Holy Spirit in them, they can do terrible wrong things against you. They will be happy. But if the Holy Spirit is in them, the Holy Spirit will trouble them. They can't sleep until they come and correct it. 
No wonder the Lord Jesus Christ could say, by their fruit you will know them. A child who is led by the Holy Spirit, you know, to be led by the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit must be in, in you. When you read in the book of Romans, there are so many scriptures in the book of Romans, that's telling us that the Holy Spirit, that we are led by the Spirit of God. You know, if you are led by the Spirit of God, it means you are of God and the Holy Spirit is in you. And if the Holy Spirit is in you, the Holy Spirit must tell you today that this sermon is not me standing, it is him talking to all of us, even one to myself. He wants to shake the church. He wants to, to shake all of us. Say, hey, you, wake up, wake up, wake up. Now I'm asking to all of us the questions. When are we expecting to see everything start taking place in us? Because we, are, we can see Matthew chapter 24, Mark 13, Luke 21, with our naked eyes. And all of us can say, yes, the rapture can take place anytime. But according to the scriptures, before the rapture, God must shake this world through you and me. So when are we expecting to see the manifestations of God in us? We have already received the word, yes, that's true. But the word of God is not just, you know, it is a seed. And the seed in us must show, must, must produce the nature of what you have received. For how long are we going to remain as if we, we, have, we have received nothing? Yes, I think I must stop because I, I mentioned about 10 minutes. We shall continue the Lord willing next Sunday. I will continue with the same subject. Brothers and sisters, let us not remain as if we have received nothing. Otherwise, we are grieving the Spirit of God. In us, we must have that desire. We must cry unto the Lord. We should speak like Mary. Let us pray. Precious Heavenly Father, under that precious blood which was shed on the cross of Calvary, Amen. I bring all my brothers, my sisters, even myself, Amen. before Thee. Amen. Father, forgive us. Forgive us because it's either we don't know who we are, or we haven't yet believed. Father, forgive us. Come destroy whatsoever which is in us, which are contrary to thy perfect will. For the Holy Spirit to have right in his church. For the Holy Spirit to have right in me. For the Holy Spirit to have right in each brother each sister who is listening now and who will listen to this sermon in the future. Father, otherwise we shall ask them, but where is their God? What now the word will say, where is their God? Because we are the one singing about Jesus Christ our Lord. We are singing about the message. We are singing about thy word. Father, please, Come and have right in each one of us so that the scriptures can be fulfilled. Once again, Father, we have our sister Nicole Ngandu who has been admitted again in hospital. 
The hand is not short. You are the great God. Can you heal our sister so that we can also come and uh, praise thy name more and more? Remember our husband, our brother, Brother Freddy. Remember their son. Remember our precious Brother Roy. Remember Brother Katimbere. Remember the brothers and sisters all over the earth who are bedridden and waiting upon you. Father, the work done on the cross of Calvary, it's not in vain. You said it is finished. Yes, Father. Yes. Come, have right in thy church. Have right in each one of us. Have right, Father, because what you have done, what you have planned, no one can disannul it. Father, we don't want just to keep on reading, reading, yes, we keep on reading, but we want to see the divine realities in each one of us. Oh, Father, increase our faith, increase our faith. In Jesus Christ's name, Father, I have prayed. Amen. We shall sing the last song, song number 79, song number 79, down from his glory, <clears throat> down from his glory, ever living story, my God and Savior came, and Jesus was his name. Born in a manger to his own stranger, a man of sorrows, tears, and agony. Oh, how I love him! Oh, how I adore him! My breath, my sunshine, my only oh, the great creator. Became a savior, and all God's fullness dwelleth in him. What conversation bringing us redemption that he made it of night, not one faint of inside. God gracious tender, laid aside his splendor. Stooping to go to him to save my soul. Oh, how I love him, oh, how I adore him. My breath, my sunshine, my holy oh. The great creator became my savior, and all God's fullness dwelleth in him. Without reluctance, fresh and bloody substance, he took the form of man, revealed the hidden plan. Oh, glorious mystery, sacrifice of Calvary. And now I know, now when the great I am. Oh, how I love him, oh, how I adore him. My breath, my, my sunshine, my holy oh, the great creator became my savior, and all God's fullness dwelleth in him. Oh, 